Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my pathology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about cell injury, which is reversible, unlike cell death, which is irreversible. What's the most common cause of cell injury? If you say hypoxia, you're absolutely correct. We have talked about hypoxia before and the three types of hypoxia, namely ischemia, hypoxemia, and hemoglobin abnormalities. We also talked about the four causes of hypoxia, which include stagnant hypoxia, hypoxemic hypoxia, histotoxic hypoxia, and anemic hypoxia. Today, we shall discuss the organs of your body that are the most vulnerable to hypoxic damage. So let's get started. Please watch the videos in this pathology playlist in order. Cell injury, reversible, apoptosis and necrosis, irreversible. The most common cause of cell injury is hypoxia or anoxia. But that's not the only cause. We have other causes as well. Causes of hypoxia include ischemia, hypoxemia, and hemoglobin abnormalities. One cause of this could be a thrombus or an embolus or atherosclerosis. One cause of this could be a ventilation defect, perfusion defect, or diffusion defect. Hemoglobin abnormalities include anemia, carbon monoxide poisoning, methemoglobinemia, sulfhemoglobinemia, etc. Define tissue hypoxia, inadequate or less tissue oxygenation. How about anoxia? No tissue oxygenation. Anytime there is less oxygen in the tissue, there will be less oxygen in the mitochondria and less oxygen in your electron transport chain, which means the electron transport chain is toast, which means you cannot make ATP, you cannot make energy, which means your chances of survival are dismal. Causes of hypoxia include ischemia, hypoxemia, hemoglobin abnormalities. Other classification will classify hypoxia into hypoperfusion or stagnant hypoxia, hypoxic or better hypoxemic hypoxia, anemic hypoxia, and last, histotoxic hypoxia. All of this was discussed before in previous videos in great detail. So what are the tissues that are the most vulnerable to hypoxia? Well, here are the rules. If you are very active, metabolically speaking, you will be very vulnerable should the tissue lack oxygen. Moreover, if you are far away from the artery, anatomically speaking, you will be more vulnerable to hypoxia because the artery is the one that brings you oxygen. What are these tissues that are most vulnerable to hypoxia? Type A fibers because they are very active, metabolically speaking. In the kidney, the proximal convoluted tubule and the thick ascending limb of loop of hand, the most active part of the kidney and the second most active part of the kidney the part that reabsorbs 65% of almost everything, and the part that reabsorbs about 20% of almost everything, except water. The thick ascending limb is impermeable to water. And don't forget that the loop of Henle is responsible for concentrating or diluting your urine by the counter current multiplier system. As for the liver, it's zone 3. Why? Because if you recall, zone 3 was around the central venule and far away from the artery. So if I draw the hexagon like this, where is zone 3? In the middle, near the central vein. That's zone 3 right here. Where's the artery? Way here. Far away from zone 3. That's why zone 3 is the most vulnerable to hypoxia in the liver. How about nervous system? Neurons are vulnerable. They are very active indeed and the watershed areas of the brain, which means the area between the part supplied by the anterior cerebral artery and the part supplied by the middle cerebral artery. The area in between, because as you branch out, your artery starts big, here's the big ACA. As it branches out, the vessels get smaller and smaller and smaller. Similarly, the MCA, middle cerebral, starts up big and then branches into smaller, smaller, smaller branch. So there is more oxygen proximally than distally. This area that is on the edge is called the watershed area. And you have some between the ACA and the MCA, others between the MCA and the PCA. They are vulnerable to lack of oxygen, hypoxia. How about the heart? Please recall that the coronary arteries penetrate the epicardial surface. The epicardium is on the outside. So therefore, who's going to be most vulnerable? The one that is far away from the pericardium, i.e. the endocardium the one on the inside, particularly the subendocardium of the left ventricle, because the left ventricle is the most active part of the heart. How about my gut? Well, the splenic flexure. Why? Because it's between two big arteries, 
One is called the superior mesenteric artery and the other is called the inferior mesenteric artery. So think of it as a watershed area of the colon. Also, the rectosigmoid is vulnerable for the same reason. Can we be more specific about the kidney? The straight segment of the proximal tubule and the medullary segment of the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. If you have to choose which one is the most vulnerable, the straight segment of the proximal convoluted tubule because it's the most active. Here is your proximal convoluted tubule and here's the loop of Henle. The last part is the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle. If I have to choose, I'll have to go with the proximal convolute tubule. Is this in the cortex or the medulla of the kidney? It's in the cortex, in the outer crust. And that's why the cortex is the most vulnerable part of the kidney when it comes to hypoxia. The cortex is more vulnerable than the medulla, believe it or not. Hence, a disease known as diffuse cortical necrosis. And I have a video about that topic in my nephrology playlist. Do you want to learn more about trauma, the different types of shock, cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, septic shock, neurogenic shock, anaphylactic shock, etc., then download my surgery high-yield scores at medicosisperfectsnalis.com. To learn about arrhythmias, acute respiratory distress syndrome, angina and myocardial infarction, ischemic strokes, hemorrhagic strokes, and much more, download my emergency medicine high-yield scores at medicosisperfectsnalis.com. To learn about the normal changes of pregnancy and the diseases of pregnancy, download my OBGYN high yield scores. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, then click the join button and subscribe to the highest tier. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Click the bell. Support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.